So what I decided to do was start off with a slat of ash. Now I cut this as a backing strip for, you know, for bows, flight bows, what have you. And this one, it's got a couple of thin points in it somewhere. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a thin spot there. And the grain's a bit waggly, so it's not actually, it'd probably be okay for a, you know, 40 pound English longbow. But it's not good enough for a flight bow, which is what I really wanted it for. But I thought if I just cut it out dead straight, quick lick on the belt sander to take the sharp edges off, ignore the thin points, We'll put it on the tiller and you'll see how just a flat piece of wood bends. And then we can tiller it just in two dimensions initially. And that can answer some of the questions about what they call a pyramid bow, which is a straight taper. Uh, but let's have less talking and more doing, shall we? So here we are. There's the flat slat of ash. Now that's not easy to say. It's on the tiller, there's the thin point, but hopefully that won't show up too badly. I've marked the centre, I don't know if you can see that. And I've also put a bit of tape dead centre. And we can see if my assertion that pulling above centre where the arrow passes really makes a difference. So, before I pull it boys and girls, I want you to draw on your piece of paper the shape you think it's going to make. No, this isn't really a quiz. but. Um, Ask yourself, what do you expect to see? Because, if, you know, I just demonstrated, yeah, 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 yeah. So what? We knew that was going to happen. But did you? Oh, that, you can say, oh, that doesn't look too bad initially. But as we pull more and more, right, you can see most of the bends in the middle, yeah? And can you see the thin point is actually showing up as slightly weak as well? So, and this is ash, so I can take quite good liberties with it. I think you'll all agree that tiller's pretty hideous, all the bends in the middle. And I've done this before using a sheet of polycarbonate and you actually get a parabola. So most of the bend in the middle. Are we all agreed? You can give yourself a point if you've got that right. And at the end, whoever gets the most points can um, go and make themselves a nice cup of tea. Right, the other thing to note is that string was taut, it's now slack and it's taken a little bit of set. I don't think it was bent that way to start with. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I mean, you can look back over the video. Now what we'll do is we'll taper it from full width there to just wider than the width of the knock. Run it through the bandsaw, do it again. Right, because I'm trying to do a real world experiment here and do something vaguely realistic, this thin patch is really annoying me. So I've cut a wafer thin sliver from some ash. Actually, it's from the other end of this piece. I'm just going to glue that on with some five minute epoxy, smooth it on the sander. Just, just to get rid of that irritating bit so you'll really see the results a bit better. Again, it's just, just a bit of fun and it also shows you guys um, what sort of liberties you can and can't take. be interesting to see if it pops off or does it hold. There's the um, five minute epoxy patch just going off in the vise. I'll sand that down and we'll get back to the experiment. I've tried to improve that thin point by just gluing on a, a little scrap of ash that was lying around in me box of offcuts. It's not a pretty job, it's not supposed to be, it's just hopefully it will give us a better look at what's going on. You can see I've tapered it, but I've had to taper it and leave enough width to get the string on. Theoretically, if you taper from full width, doesn't matter how wide, full width to a point you'll get a perfect arc of a circle tiller. Now I've done that with sheet, a sheet of polycarbonate sawn out and that's on my blog. I think if you get on the blog which is Bowyer's Diary, just Google Bowyer's Diary and do a search for I think it's taper test or pyramid taper 
it will come up and, you, and you'll see that experiment. But for now, because we're doing this practically, I've got to get a string on, so I've had to leave a bit of width for a knock. In fact, even on the polycarbonate one, I had to leave a wafer thin little sliver. But we'll pop the string on. The other thing to notice, of course, is on the previous test with it parallel, it still bent, you still had a curve. So when you're tillering, you're looking for perfection because you can see when it's not perfect, it still bends in a curve. And of course, what you get is people posting pictures of their bow and, and it's bending in some sort of curve and they think that's tiller. Well, you just saw a dead straight stick will bend in a curve. So we'll try it now. Will it look better? I have to use a mirror to look around the back of the camera. Oh, well, unfortunately, it's not looking much better, is it? <laughs> well, it's a little bit better, but you can see my weak point's definitely weak. Right, well, maybe that showed it, maybe it didn't. But what we'll do now, we'll overcome one of the problems of having to leave some width. What we'll do is I'll draw the line along the edge going to an exact point and I'll saw along that line but just as I get near the tip they'll flare back out to full width. Hopefully you'll see an improved curve but what I'll also do is on that horrible weak point there I'll leave extra width there. I won't come in quite so narrow there. So you can see I'm already in the process of trying to compensate, trying to tiller the wood I've got rather than the ideal perfect bit of wood because there is no such thing. Ah, now this illustrates why the previous test wasn't as successful as one might have hoped. Can you see the lines? Drawing a pencil line going to an actual point like it should do compared with how I had to saw it out and leave some width for the knock. So you see there is substantial extra wood in the outer 8 to 10 inches. If I now remove most of that, but then just flare out for the knocks, hopefully we'll see an improved curve. There, you can see what I've done now. You can see what a difference it makes now. It looks like I've gone ludicrously thin there. But it's that old point about there's so little leverage at the end of a bow that's not going to snap. Well, shouldn't snap. We'll see. That's the point of a live experiment. Similarly, you'll see this end, I've done the same, but I've left it wide where that dodgy, thin, patched bit was. Stick the string on, see how it goes. Of course, having made it narrower at the tips, it will probably bend further, but the shape should be better. Well, this is only a thin skinny bit of timber but having a play like this teaches you so much it gives you an idea how much thickness you need you know for a certain poundage and just gives you a feel for what's going on and what really happens here we go on the tiller again just check i've got it all in shot yep Ah, you can see the tips are certainly coming round more and that right limb is matching up to the curve on the wall. That is looking more like an arc of a circle. Well, I hope you agree. You can see that. Yeah, the weak point's still weak, but it's vastly better. And you'll see the tips are coming down to the same level. Now, let's move the point we're drawing to one inch above to where you'd really have it, where the arrow passes. And bingo, you'll see the bow now tilts and you'll see the tiller looks different. <laughs> Funnily enough, it still looks perfectly all right. But you'll see the left tip is one brick higher than the right, which is how my bows often appear. Well, I think I've probably done enough there. Shall we pull it till it breaks? Let's see what we can do. Christmas night. There you go, 32 inch draw. <laughs> I haven't got the heart to pull it any further. 
I hope that's been fun. <laughs>